Hello, class. Uh, today we are going to talk more about taste and uh, fashion consumption, right? So last week, uh, last Tuesday, uh, we had talked about the history of taste and the conception of taste and how the definitions of taste has been changed and shifted uh, throughout the times and how people started to put the symbolic meanings on somebody's taste like power of the nation and the power of the class uh, although symbolic meanings has been put on somebody's taste so that was considered as not as a preference somebody's preference but as a social distinction and the and the standards of social um, judgment to make a judgment on somebody else's taste right uh, so that uh, so today uh, we are going to continue to talk about some more and more theories of social scientists who had talked about the class uh, and the and the and the taste and the taste appreciation and we're gonna move on to talk about the the people's understandings about the taste and the, how we can redefine the, uh, the taste in this contemporary society. All right, so we are going to start on the slide number 10 of your first uh, PowerPoint uh, material. All right, so please uh, look at uh, starting uh, to look at the, um, the slide 10 uh, of your of your class material. All right, so uh, let's uh, move on to the 19th century Paris and how people uh, perceived about the meanings of the taste on those ages. Right? Okay, so uh, we are in 19th century Paris. Okay, so lots of people believe and insist uh, that uh, that was the place and the age where the class, dis class distinction started, right? And uh, there was industrial revolution in those ages in 19th century Paris, not just in Paris, but all over the European countries. The industrial revolution was going on that means uh, the, the new class has suddenly appeared and means that made a lot of money and people who are having lots of money became the new class, which is called bourgeois uh, in uh, French society. Uh, they are calling those people who suddenly got rich and got the power because in the, in, in the, in the stage of industrial revolution, the money and the class and your social power was closely linked. So people People uh, started to uh, wear a very opulent, um, decorative kind of clothes to express their class and who they are. So for those ages, the self-definition, who they are, uh, were um, more about uh, how rich you are and what kind, of, which class you are included, and those kind of and and what uh, what kind of cultural activities that you're doing so what you do and what you like and what you have and those kind of um, like symbolic meanings of yourself uh, became the, the the portrait of yourself so you were thinking like what you have and what you wear what you eat what you see what you hear becomes you so that was the starting point of class and the power and the culture and the, somebody's taste uh, was uh, so uh, closely linked okay so uh, especially in 19 I'm sorry, especially in 1889 in Paris, uh, there was a universal universal expo, like exposition in Paris in, in 1889. So the Eiffel Tower has built and the, the, that was the starting point of the era of modernism. So people started to believe that there is technology and the reason and the, and the and the things, the new things that you can practically see uh, can define can define uh, the somebody's taste and how uh, you are uh, fast to adopt the new taste and the new fashion uh, became the standards to to appreciate uh, which class you're included. So people are saying that 
is so-called social inclusion so clothing uh, became the medium the medium of you to be included in social classes there was many many of social gatherings and the parties dance parties and and the, and the dining places and the places for the cultural activities so you need a diverse types of opulent uh, and and decorative and very luxurious kind of clothing uh, to show that uh, to show who you are so that was those times people are remembering those age as belle epoque so belle epoque means that is the french word which means belle means beautiful and epoque means era the period so that was the last period when people uh, really appreciated what is beautiful and what is uh, aesthetically right taste so uh, that was the the age in French society and as well uh, the silk industry was in in especially in Lyon uh, the district the, the area of Lyon uh, silk industry peaked in the age of 19th centuries yeah that means they could have many um diverse and luxurious and uh, good quality uh, textile materials so they could see the new the new and also mass produced a uh, kind of material so they could have an access to wear a new kind of textile clothing and that was kind of experience uh, for the people who are living in those ages So uh, what you wear, what you eat, where you go, what you do became the most important thing uh, for the people who are living in those areas in this place in Paris, okay? So fashion was considered as a medium for expressing themselves uh, living on those ages. That means they were expressing uh, the spirit of the times. Uh, what a uh, kind of um, like opinions or the views to see the word has been widely shared by the people who are living on those ages. So if you look at on these paintings that has been drawn by famous artists, you can see uh, that everybody looks to, uh, pretty much the same. Okay, so uh, uh, everybody, the dresses they have, because we're calling those ages of the ages of fashion, that is why you can see very distinctive fashion styles of this age, okay? So, uh, here you have, uh, the first uh, picture is that is the picture of the, the postal stamp. <laughs> when the the universal expo and exhibition was going on in 19th century paris okay so you can see the symbol of apple tower that is symbolizing the modernism and the technological development and the modernism thinking like people are thinking uh way differently from the previous ages because the new technology has been developed industrial revolution was going on and the new buildings uh, that was not quite like aesthetically beautiful building because uh, people who are living in those ages was just shocked to see this kind of huge building like standing on paris nowadays people are uh, viewing those as a history and that is a one a symbol of paris and that is yeah looks okay yeah oh, beautiful okay but uh, on those ages people were living in very radically changing rapidly changing ages and that was symbolizing those spirit of times and you can see here uh, three different paintings three paintings that has been um, drawn by the famous artist. The first painting was drawn by uh, Auguste Renoir and the second painting was drawn by Henri Jervex and the third painting is Pablo Picasso, okay? You can see all the different expressions and the, all the different like uh, uh, like ways to describe the feelings and the moods of the society, okay? So on the first painting, 
the August Renoir's uh, paintings, uh, uh, which is titled The Dance at the Moulin de la Galette. The Moulin here means, as you can see on the in the Moulin Rouge, the Moulin Rouge, Moulin means windmill, and the Rouge means red. So you can see the red windmill that was symbolizing a very like busy or a luxurious, not very luxurious, but hedonic, a hedonic or vulgar a kind of activities going on on the Parisian light nightlife. So we are calling those like mm, like. Mm, Okay, so that was uh, the party night and, and the Parisian nightlife of those ages. That was the symbol of the Parisian, like, people enjoyed, like, living in those stages. Because people could think that uh, the new technology has developed and the new classes is emerging and lots of changes they can see the changes and lots of people are spending many times to decorating themselves and eating delicious and and well like uh, prepared uh, food and and they enjoyed uh, the cultural activities they could experience on those stages so uh, the august renoir has painted and expressed the happy faces the happy happy pleasant kind of faces of the women and the men who are living on those ages because think of that <laughs> if you purchase the new clothing or if you are just uh, really jumping onto the consumption cycle of the fashion people might be happy <laughs> in some way so uh, August Renoir expressed those happiness uh, what uh, people uh, could feel happy having the social gatherings and share and share their taste that that was the beautiful uh, times and pe and the times that people are still remembering those ages was beautiful okay so that was called bell a uh, book uh, sage and on the second painting you can see the title of this painting is el sank el sank de Bakuin. Bakuin here means the fashion house, the designer fashion house, the boutique, designer boutique. And you can, uh, you had spent this thing five uh, hours. <laughs> You're spending five hours and the designer boutique. Okay, so that was very prevalent uh, kind of cultural activities of the people, like especially for women. So the, the women, uh, bourgeois women, uh, they spent more than five hours at the st at the designer's boutique uh, to uh, talk with the people yeah, who were there uh, to see the new clothes and new luxurious materials and social gatherings and the kind of forum uh, was going on that was not just about uh, the, the the functional uh, reasons that they were there to get a new clothes or to to arrange for the new clothes but they were there to uh, talk with the people yeah who gathered there and they uh, shared the information that only the people who are enclosed uh, in included on their social classes could share only so that was the place of cultural activities and the uh, and the uh, and the uh, and then and the, that was the place of the trend and that was place of the fashion and the taste invention right and you can see on the third page third a uh, third painting like pavel picasso you can see the cynical like criticizing a kind of point of view of pavel picasso because he was a uh, drawing not the happy face of the people but a very like sarcastic kind of point of view of Pablo Picasso has been well presented on this painting because he captured the intoxicating scene as a dizzy, a blur of the fashionable figures with expressionless faces. So they don't have their identity, they don't have their personal identity uh, of taste, but they're just, just uh, following the social codes and the social dress codes and the social like um, codes like people uh, put the meanings on certain tastes and lots of people just uh, move here from there to follow certain fashion and that was considered as 
A, okay. A, <laughs> not very interesting to uh, Pablo Picasso, okay. So that was the dizzy night of Parisian nightlife, okay. And those kind of paintings was uh, pretty popular. And, and these images like expressing what they wear and you can see on the paintings on the only uh, Jervex you can see he has a, like a printed every details of the frills of the and then the only uh, all the decorations and the small pieces like flowers and the frills and the and the 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 texture of the fabric is well expressed on his painting because the clothing itself uh, because the the textile industry and the development the industry and the clothing that people wear was considered that important on those ages so you can see all the illustrations of the paint uh, the clothes that has been uh, well presented uh, on this painting okay on these paintings of this era uh, and there were another artists such as uh, like Edgar Degar and uh, uh, Edouard Manet uh, they also uh, follow the, the artistic the movement of expressionism <clears throat> And they expressed how they felt about the mood and the, and, the, and the circumstances going on and the social phenomena. People are all, people are following the fashion and the new class came up. And those uh, kind of uh, phenomena has been well uh, interpreted and presented by those artist, artists who are living in those ages. So modernism thinking was born in this age, uh, coming up with the Industrial Revolution. And it was brought along with the cultural trend and the cultural changes. And that was aroused from the wild scale transformation going on in Western society in the late 19th centuries and the early 20th century. Okay. So the factors that shaped modernism uh, throughout this age uh, were the development of modern industrial societies and the rapid growth of the cities and rapid changes. And that was followed by the World War II. Hmm. Uh, I'm sorry, World War I. Uh, because think of that, uh, like people, all the people are just pursuing the same value, like <laughs> looking at the same direction, like people in Parisian countries and other, other, and other cities in European cities, in European countries, are just adopting the new technology and then, and one one way, a kind of uh, like reason oriented, logic oriented kind of thinking, modernism thinking, uh, was going on. That was the spirit of the times because everybody was following uh, those um, ideas, and that was considered as a social power and the competence, the social competence. So people. People, yeah, who were living on those ages, except those artists who criticize about those kind of social phenomena, like like normal people <laughs> were just following the code, social code of those ages was uh, like they uh, try to enjoy their life, they, were, they live their lives, but because everybody was following the same role and they, they're searching for pursuing the same value and that the competence oriented uh, kind of uh, living and and the, the, and those kind of uh, moves has brought uh, the competition and that was followed by the World War One, I, I believe. And here uh, we have very important figure who discuss pretty much about fashion and modernism. And for this course, we cannot uh, go deeper to discuss this series, but I really recommend you, if you have um, extra time, uh, please uh, try to read some books written by Avalto Benjamin because that he was the person who talked pretty much about fashion and modernism okay so uh the writing the small essay that i'd like to introduce for you for today is farto benjamin's arcade project
okay uh, that was uncompleted uh, uncompleted uh, his final uh, book talking about the streets uh, in paris why this book has not been completed was because uh, Bartol Benjamin committed suicide uh, on uh, his age of 48 in Paris because uh, Bartol Benjamin was concerning and like um, discerning pretty much about the social problems of this society, this capitalism society, consumerism-oriented society. And he discerned uh, so much about these so social problems and try to uh, describe the, all the problems of this, uh, this social phenomena. And he was originally, he is a German, German uh, philosopher, philosopher but uh, on the later life as his lives on his 40s he revisited the Paris because Paris was the place uh, where the consumerism was born okay so uh, the arcade project as you can see on the title of his essay small essay the last essay Ar arcade project arcade arcade is a the 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 uh, glass roofed rows, <laughs> uh, rows of streets of the shops around all the shops and the boutiques and the stores are around you and you can have a small rows and small a uh, glass roofed rows so you can walk uh, through the rows you can just uh, walk through the rows that means a uh, different other peoples are walking behind you so you have to move on you have to progress walk you have to walk uh, like on uh, is that is the one way row think of that if you get into the department store or on a shopping mall you can you can have an aisle to follow yeah so that is the place that uh, put the people to get along the street to follow the street uh, that was uh, symbolized it as people are following the rules and the social codes of certain uh, space and the times so that was considered problematic uh, for Valto Benjamin so he discerned pretty much about this situation and those problems was because of the advent of the new class and the class and the power and the fashion and the culture were all mixed together so that was just a promoting a people's modernism thinking that means uh, people are uh, always talking about the progress and development and those competence and those kind of things and those consumerism oriented thinking that means what you have could be what you are so those kind of thinking the cons consumption behavior and consumption activity itself could make people happy so those ideas were uh, the starting point of all the social problems and the and the world war one and the, the great depression that uh, uh, people experienced on those ages so when Alberto Benjamin has revisited an, in Paris in 1936 that was uh, like 40 years later um, than the Belle Epoque Bell, Bell stage that we had discussed a little before okay so that was after 40 years so you cannot find uh, the the birthplace of the, this consumerism but uh, the place was the, the 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 arcade itself was there we are not living in the same age but place is still there so uh, he visited there imagining uh, what was going on like 40 years ago and, and started to imagine how people were doing thinking acting on those ages and his essay is uh, saying pretty much about the fashion and the modernism thinking what was the problem of that and how we're gonna solve these problems and he could not find the answer so he uh, uh, 
committed suicide and made those decisions it was due to the, all the, the social problems and lots of philosophers in those ages. Especially in the city of Paris, lots of intelligent people and scholars were gathered and discussed and talked about those issues. So that was the place that Bertha Benjamin was uh, stayed on, the later, on his later lives. Okay. And on this arcade project article, like essay, he has mentioned about here at a distance from what is normally meant by progress. Walter Benjamin finds the lost times embedded in the space of things, the space of the things, materials like materials like clothing, like materials like mm, like tangible or materials that is has represented somebody's class and somebody's social identity so that caused uh, the, all the problems that we are facing right now so that was uh, Walter Benjamin's concern okay uh, on the last page I I just uh, just found that I pronounced the Edgar Degas and the Edouard Manes uh, their uh, their artistic uh, like ways to 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 the artistic movement going on on these ages as expressionism it is not expressionism it is called impressionism i'm sorry impressionism that means expressionism is expressing uh, what you see uh, but impressionism is expression of what you perceive so in your eyes uh, the all the social phenomena all the uh, all the scenes that you can see could be seen differently by you could be impressed all differently by yourself so your impression on certain things and uh, uh, somebody else's impression could be totally different so that was the, the artistic movement of impressionism and lots of people uh, were uh, discussing about uh, these kind of social movement like people like one-way movement in terms of uh, the, the theory of progress uh, people are thinking that they're moving and and they're progressing that means they are following the rules and they and they people will think like f fashion could be one medium, fashion could be the one, could be the universal key yeah, to get a success in modern society. And following the rules then means following the fashion, certain fashions or the certain codes. Yeah, it could be another way and that is the necessary way to gain adequate understanding about what the ma the majority of the people were thinking. So that was the understanding about the modern word. Okay, so lots of artists and the philosophers criticize much about uh, those kind of one way thinking of those ages. Okay, now let's talk about uh, the French uh, sociologist, very uh, famous, a uh, French sociologist, Pierre Bourdieu. Pierre Bourdieu, I'm sorry, Pierre Bourdieu, okay, and uh, he had uh, theorized the social distinction and the role of taste and how taste and the social distinction and how uh, people are making judgment on somebody's taste and, and based on uh, their uh, like a habitual, habitual kind of activities, cultural activities, and and consumption activities is presenting uh, somebody's class, and that was pretty much like criticized at the same time, and at the same time it has been theorized as a well-established a theory that is the theory of social distinction of this French uh, sociologist Pierre Bourdieu. Bourdieu. Okay, so Pierre Bourdieu has been uh, like mentioned pretty much on your article as well for this week's reading. So I'd like to introduce a little bit about Pierre Bourdieu. Uh, Pierre Bourdieu is born into a working class family, working class family in a rural area of, of France. And he was 
born into a working class family but he entered for the university he entered the university de paris and paris in the university of paris the first uh, that was also known as the university of paris sorbonne and you can find many university of paris uh, Paris and in, in Paris but the real thing is that is a public school so high class uh, like um, kids and then the uh, people are from the working class all all mixed together in the same classroom and they attended at this public school uh, all together so that was the place that he uh, the Pierre Bourdieu experienced experience the social distinction, very habitual kind of ways, how students are distinguishing, oh, he is from working class and he is from the high class. And those kind of micro like grouping of the people you know, who are attending the school, the same school, that was really sad, but, uh, but that was the most critical point that uh, Pierre Bourdieu uh, wanted and studied over about social distinction. So uh, he had uh, did a longitudinal, like long, long, for a long time, longer, long years, like spent his life, like 40 years have his research to study about this social distinction. And he had a, like um, a report, like series of report to say that they could be, there could be more than 70 categories to distinguish somebody's taste. The first category that he mentioned is about the language. So uh, the language that they're speaking is different. <laughs> So the, the vocabulary of uh, of the, the the vocabulary of the students using was like different, yeah, from the working uh, lower class a family or the from high class family. So the languages and vocabularies were different. And secondly, the material things like clothing and the, all the all the all the materials that they have is all different. That is the di distinguishing point that for the people who'd like to see and and make some distinction, make some judgment on somebody's taste. And the music they like and the, uh, whether they like classical music or the pop music or the well whether they like opera <laughs> or whether they like going to the movies and those kind of uh, like cultural activities were all categorized to see oh that is high class that is low class and nowadays people are thinking like his theory is so like mm, mm, too simple to just <laughs> to divide the high class activities and the low class activities and those uh, cultural activities is considered high bro and that is low bro uh, like you can he has divided the, the activities of the high class and low class like in half so that was considered uh, not that Mm, profound to deeper understand about the, the 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 cultural and social distinction going on on these ages about the real thing until now until now lots of students lots of people are thinking about there is kind of invisible kind of class distinction based on what we do what we like and what you like to wear and those things like our consumption activities is presenting uh, some kind of the culture like a class-based uh, taste so that was as you can see on this painting that is the illustration presented by a student and and that was four dimensional you can see the dimension one two three four four dimension it has been divided by uh, how much how rich you are the economic capital based on the economic capital how 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 much money you have and and based on the cultural capital you can see so uh, what kind of culture 
activities you like to do and how 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 many languages you speak and how uh, what kind of music and you know, what kind of arts you like and those kind of categories has been all all placed on four different dimensions and they have divided the class based on the taste and what they have so uh, that was uh, like a uh, pretty influential kind of approach to understand about the class and the and the taste right however as time goes by uh, people realize that his theory is not that relevant uh, for nowadays situation nowadays people could have omnivorous that means omnivorous taste that means you can you like to watch a a like you like to listen to a pop music at the same time you like to, like to watch the opera so high 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 bro taste and a low bro taste you can have both of them at the same time so that is um called as omnivorous uh, kind of approach to understand better about nowadays consumers right and and Purdue uh Pierre Purdue also mentioned about gamers and the non-gamers so you can choose to be included in some certain social uh, like condition or social groups so that means you'd like to uh, play your game you'd like to uh, play with them in that certain field the space of the field who are uh, sharing certain rules and codes and you can in that case you can be the gamer that means you can choose to be a gamer the same time you don't choose to be a gamer on certain groups and you can find another group another cultural groups of the people to follow their rules and talk with them right so uh we now we are calling them as insiders and outsiders and we are calling insiders as the people who are very sensitive about fashion and then the and the cultural activities and who likes to do the instagrams we are calling uh, calling them insiders and we're calling some other people who are not very interested in mainstream culture we're calling them outsiders so so for the next video we're going to talk about ghost Ninja, Ninja. Okay, uh, that was the this week's reading. So we are gonna continue to talk more about these outsider peoples. All right. So I'll see you on the next video.